Deontay Wilder has got a lot of things to say about Anthony Joshua. Now he's talking about Joshua's fight against Povetkin. He says, I think it's definitely going to be a difficult fight for Joshua. I think Povetkin is a good fighter. I really do think he's a good fighter. I think he's a smart fighter at times in the ring. I do think he has problems with tall fighters, but he's smart. If you give him the opportunity, he will capitalize on it and he will get you out of there. He goes on to say, Joshua has so much on his mind, so much going on right now. He's the man of his country. With that being said, when everybody knows you, you can be very miserable because everywhere he goes, of course, they're mentioning my name. He can't get away from me. He probably thinks about me in his sleep because my name is mentioned so much. I know it. When are you going to fight Wilder? Fight Wilder, you pussy. You're a disgrace. This is what they're saying now. The roles have reversed dramatically. I think this is going to be a difficult fight for him because I don't really think his mindset is going to be in the right place. With this Povetkin fight, the fans aren't supporting him as strongly as they once were. So those are the words of Deontay Wilder. Now, in America, if Joshua was fighting in America, then yeah, I would agree with what Deontay Wilder is saying here. And there has been some mm, discontent among the Anthony Joshua fans and among the general public in the UK with Anthony Joshua. Not so much because of the Wilder situation, more because of his last two performances not really delivering in terms of excitement. And a lot of the fans were not happy with the finish or the stoppage, should I say, in the Carlos Takam fight. And they weren't happy with how boring the Joseph Parker fight was. So I think in terms of the British public, that's where most of the pressure is coming from for Anthony Joshua. Yeah, there are some sections of the British public who really want to see the Wilder fight and they're upset. But the majority of Anthony Joshua fans are on Anthony Joshua's side, very much on his side when it comes to this Wilder situation. You know, and a lot of the Anthony Joshua fans, the casuals, which constitutes the majority of uh, Joshua fans, uh, a lot of them don't even know who Wilder is, really. They've heard his name, but they're not really up to speed on the ins and outs of the Wilder-Joshua negotiation situation. They're not really up to speed like we are, all right? Because they're not that hardcore into boxing that they're reading the different articles and looking at the interviews and analyzing this and comparing it to that. The average casual boxing fan, which constitutes the majority of boxing fans and certainly the majority of Joshua fans, they're not going into it as deep as we are. That's what you need to understand. That's what Wilder needs to understand. So no, the vast majority of Joshua fans are still very much behind him in terms of the Wilder situation. And the only thing which will really put pressure on Joshua in terms of the British fans in the Povetkin fight is Joshua's performance and how exciting it is. The British fans want an exciting performance from Joshua against Povetkin. That's where the pressure is coming from. Now, Joshua might feel some pressure to get past Povetkin, to get the unification with Wilder. Yeah, he might feel pressure in that sense because he wants to achieve the goal of becoming undisputed champion. He certainly felt that pressure in the Parker fight because that's why he said he boxed conservatively against Parker because he wanted to get it out of the way to make sure he didn't have any slip-ups, you know, didn't have to fight a rematch with Parker or anything like that if he lost, to make sure he could just go straight into a unification with Wilder. That's why he said he boxed carefully against Joseph Parker. So that is in the back of his mind, you know, trying to make that Wilder fight. And that is where the pressure may come from, right? From Joshua in his head being a bit conflicted because he's thinking, okay, I want to get the Wilder fight, so I need to make sure that I don't take unnecessary risks against Povetkin because he's dangerous. But at the same time, I need to deliver some excitement for the fans because they were not happy with my last two performances. They were not happy with the finish against Takam, the stoppage, and they were not happy with how boring the Parker fight was. So there is pressure on him, on him in that sense. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> Deontay Wilder is trying to convince himself that he's in a better position than Anthony Joshua is. You know, he says, well, he's basically saying that the fame Joshua has is a double-edged sword, which it is, it's a double-edged sword for anyone. But if you look at the reality of the situation, Joshua has achieved three, four, five times as much as Deontay Wilder has in half the amount of time. And he certainly made like five times as much money <laughs> in half the number of fights. 
and he's selling out stadiums and he's just been far more successful in a far shorter space of time than Wilder has been. So the reality of it is, Wilder is the one who's in the worst situation, not Andy Joshua. Andy Joshua might be in a more high pressure situation because he's got more to lose than Wilder, but in terms of what he's achieved in his career and the money that he's made to set himself up and his family for life, he's in a better situation than Wilder. His public profile is better. Most things about his career are better than Wilder's career right now. So Wilder's probably projecting his own insecurities onto Joshua. That's what I see here. You know, it is what it is. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree with Wilder that Povetkin is a dangerous fight? Or are you one of those people who thinks Povetkin is old? He's 38. He's over the hill. He nearly got knocked out by David Price. So on and so forth. Personally, I don't think he nearly did get knocked out by David Price. I think Price caught him with a ni nice left hook. But I think, you know, Povetkin was throwing a right hand at the time and Price caught him with a left hook simultaneously and that knocked him off balance. I don't think Povetkin was particularly hurt. I think it looked far worse than it was because of the fact he was throwing a right and then he got hit by a big left and it pushed him off balance. I don't think he was particularly concussed. No, if that shot hadn't happened, then nobody would be talking about Povetkin looking bad against David Price. They'd just be talking about Povetkin dropping David Price twice and you know, knocking him out cold and knocking out a bunch of teeth or whatever it was that he did or lacerating his mouth. That's all he'd be talking about. It's only that split second where that left hook landed when Povetkin was off balance. That is the only reason. That is the only moment in the fight that people are basing this idea that Povetkin looked bad on. You know? Uh, I'm not saying Povetkin is in his prime right now. He's certainly not in his prime as far as I'm concerned. And I don't think he will be as good now that he's off the Meldonium as he was when he was on it. And he was definitely on Meldonium, by the way, because he admitted it. I don't, I don't want to hear any of these idiots trying to claim that he was never on Meldonium. He was on Meldonium. He admitted he was on it. The only dispute is whether he continued to take Meldonium after it got banned. That's the only dispute. But prior to the ban, he was on it. So for the Takam fight and, you know, the Perez fight and all those fights there, he was taking Meldonium. Or at least he was legally allowed to take Maldonium at the time. And I can't confirm for definite for all those fights he was on it, but he was certainly on it for some of his fights because he said he was. He said he, w he was taking it. And, he's, and he, that was his excuse for getting caught for Maldonium. He said it was residual traces of Maldonium from when I was taking it the previous year when Maldonium wasn't banned. When I fought Marius Wack or whoever it was he fought. He said that's when I was taking Maldonium and that, it was residual from that. Anyway. Uh, I don't think he'll be as good without the Meldonian, but I still think he's dangerous. He's still technically good. He's still got his boxing brain. He's still smart. He can still punch, but I do think his stamina might be in question without the Meldonian. That's what I'll say. So in the second half of the fight, if Joshua has played it safe first half and broken Povetkin down sufficiently, then he should be able to take over in the second half of his boxing conservatively, and he might even be able to get the stoppage because I do suspect that Povetkin might gas without that Meldonian. So, and that's apparently what Meldonium does is it increases your stamina and endurance. That's what it does. It's not really something, as far as I'm aware, which uh, gives you extra testosterone or, uh, you know, helps you build muscle or anything like that. Although, you know, something that increases endurance could, by default, help you gain extra muscle because it allow you to you know pump more weights in the gym but in terms of recovery it won't make your muscles grow any quicker like a steroid would you know uh it won't help the the process of you know the fibers tearing and then regrowing bigger it won't help that process get faster like steroids do or growth hormone to my understanding meldonium don't do that all right uh, it just gives you extra stamina and endurance. And funnily enough, earlier on in Povetkin's career, he had a problem with stamina, stamina and endurance. But I noticed from the Klitschko fight on, all of a sudden his stamina was great. And again, this is the period in which he was taking Meldonium. So, you know, it don't take a rocket, science to, rocket scientist to figure out what was going on there. All right. He wouldn't have been taking Meldonium if there was no benefit from it. Because I've heard some idiots, some apologists saying, oh, well, you know, Meldonium doesn't really help you in any way. Well, what kind of rubbish are you talking? Why was man taking it then, if it don't help you? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? People take it because they think it helps them, right? And 
from what I saw in his performances, it was helping him. Anyway, <laughs> drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel. It's happening, I'm out.